16. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 15. In this very important verse, God himself tells us the reason why he wants us to keep the Sabbath holy. Of course, we agree that we should keep the Sabbath holy also because God created this world. And we should remember that we He's our creator. But it, there is another reason about which we often forget. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 15. Remember, God says, and I was quite surprised when I checked in the dictionary that the word used here, remember, the word remember, in the Hebrew, literally means to engrave in memory and save it. That's very interesting, meaning of the word. This is the literal meaning of the word remember, which means that it must be very important what God wants us to know. So he says, remember, or engrave in your memory and save it. <coughs> that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, this is the reason why your Lord your God has commanded you to observe, to observe the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. What was the reason God wanted Israel to keep the Sabbath? Because he gave them a freedom, a freedom from slavery. And this is exactly the same reason that wants us to keep the Sabbath day today. So if we paraphrase the same text, we could, we could read it in this way. Remember or engrave in your mind and sin, because it's extremely important, that you were condemned to that slave of sin, because Egypt in the Bible stands for what? For sin, of course. And that the Lord your God brought you out of that slavery of sin and death with a mighty hand and an outstretched on the cross, we can say. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, this is the reason the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. So God gave us the Sabbath that we may remember that Jesus set us free from slavery, sin, death, and condemnation. Mm -hmm. Let us move now to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13. Knowing the true meaning of the Sabbath, now we can easily understand why did Jesus love to set sinners free from condemnation, death, and sin, especially on what day? Not on Sunday, but on the Sabbath day. For example, in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, we read about a certain woman who was enslaved by Satan for 18 long years. And in verse 12, we read, When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity or from your slavery. But because Jesus set her free from from her infirmity, from her slavery on the Sabbath, that the hypocritical, hypocritical Jews condemned him. And what answer did Jesus give them? Verse 15 and 16. The Lord answered, You hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day? Why did Jesus suggest that this woman who was enslaved by Satan for such a long time should be set free from her slavery, especially on one day, on Sabbath day? Because Sabbath is the memorial of the gospel of freedom. freedom. Now it's time to finish, but before we close, let me read for you the final quotation from my favorite commentary to the book of Hebrews, written by Pastor Jay Sequeira. And I have to tell you something about it, because recently Al sent me an email reminding me about the web page created by UG Mines Institute and Dr. Agatha Trash. And I have to tell you that I had a privilege in 1990 to stay for a whole week in the UG Mines Institute listening to Dr. Agatha Trash and her husband Carmen. Uh, we have lectures, of course. But at the same time, they invited also Pastor Sequoia. <laughs> so every day for seven weeks in the morning, in the evening, in the evening I had a great privilege to listen to him preaching on the book of Romans and justification by faith. And I have to tell you honestly, never before, no, after, 
I felt such a great influence of Holy Spirit. It was such as, as if Holy Spirit wanted to tell me, this is the reason I brought you here at the moment. Mm. <laughs> Just listen to it carefully, study it, and bring it back, back to your country. And I have to tell you that it was very hard to leave the country after only one year, leave the country of milk and money, and then go back to Poland because I'm a communist. <laughs> so that was a fight, but finally the Holy Spirit gave me enough strength to go back. So I came back, and as soon as I came back, they started, Adventists started to invite me to give health lectures. So I was going all over the country, and whenever they invited me also, I was asked to preach on Sabbath. And whenever I preached, I, I preached about what? About the cross and salvation to the you know, of Jesus. And then I understood much, much better what Ellen White meant when she said that the half message is the right arm of the gospel. <laughs> yes. Because it was the half message which opened the <coughs> gospel in my case. Mm. But let us read the commentary. We must never separate the Sabbath from Christ our righteousness, because it is the Lord of the Sabbath that makes the day important. Mm. Without the Lord of the day, the day itself becomes meaningless. Mm. There are today many sincere Christians who are fully resting in Christ, but are Sunday keepers. They keep the wrong day, but for the right reasons. So there are many brothers and sisters in evangelical churches who have assurance of salvation, have peace with God, and they are resting in Christ. The only problem is what? <laughs> they don't keep the right day, because Sunday doesn't represent salvation through faith in Christ, but salvation through, faith, through works. There are today many sincere Christians who are fully resting in Christ, but are Sunday keepers. They keep the wrong day for the right reason. Likewise, there are many sincere Sabbath keepers who think their Sabbath keeping will save them. They are keeping the right day for the wrong reasons. <laughs> Both need to be corrected by the Holy Spirit, who is to lead us into all truth. Before the second coming of Jesus, all who come under the banner of Christ will finally <coughs> worship the Lord of the Sabbath, and their Sabbath keeping will be the outward sign or the seal of the righteousness they have already received by faith. In contrast, Sunday is the mark of the beast, will represent human attempts to earn the salvation by works. In this way, accepting Sunday and deliberate rejecting the Sabbath will become an outward expression of rejecting the salvation by faith in Jesus. And now the same author is telling a very interesting experience, which also deals with Sabbath. We had 22 Adventist students at one of the universities in Ethiopia. Children are listening now. Yes, because it's story time. <laughs> We had 22 Adventist students at one of the universities in Ethiopia, and those students were told that they would have to have an exam in zoology on the Sabbath. So because of that, they asked me if I would speak to the zoology professor on their behalf. The problem, however, was that the zoology professor was known as a very tough, unyielding, and stubborn German professor mm. or teacher. So I said to those students, before I go and speak to him, I want to ask you a question. If he will not agree to postpone your exam, will you take the exam on the Sabbath? If you say yes, I'm not going to speak to him for you. I will go to him only if you give me a word that you will not take the exam even if he won't be willing to change the date of your exam. Now, in Africa only the cream of the crop goes to university. So any person who keeps up university is regarded in Africa as the greatest fool in the whole world. <laughs> so because of this, they said, boy, this is tough. And they decided to spend three days in fasting and prayer. Mm. After those three days, only five of them came back to me. Out of those 22 young and students, only five said to me, we are willing to deprive ourselves of a university education but we will not let our Lord down. Mm. The rest said, too much of a sacrifice. 
So I went to the professor for those five students. I tried to explain to him why they can't have the exam on the Sabbath. But he stopped me and said, you don't need to explain. I come from Darmstadt where we have lots of Adventists. So mm -hmm. I know your policy very well. Mm -hmm. I can have the exam on Sunday, no trouble at all. I don't know what was behind the professor, but all those five students passed with flying cards. Mm -hmm. The others failed. <laughs> Whether the professor did it deliberately or not, I don't know, but he never penalized those five who decided to not break the fourth commandment, regardless of the consequences. And later, this Sunday evening professor said to me, I wish we had students that were as loyal to Christ as these five. Mm. Well, we all know very well that soon we will have to go through the final Sabbath test. And Satan will do his best to stop us from keeping the Sabbath whole. Not because of pain, but because of the truth which is behind this pain. The truth about the gospel and the revelation of the greatest agape love of God. So who among us will pass this great, great final test? The answer is found in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 13 to 17. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, These who are clothed in the white robes, who are they? And where have they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation. And they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne. For this reason, because they allowed God to wipe the rocks in the blood of the land. For this reason, they are before the throne of God. And verse 17, the land will be their shepherd and will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. So who will pass the great final test and tribulation? Only those, as we read, who are clothed in the white robes of Christ's righteousness, of course, because this is the only righteousness we can get to heaven through. And have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So only those who at last ceased from their own works, and those who accepted the perfect and finished salvation which is in Lord Jesus, and of which Sabbath is the memorial. Amen. Amen.